this feeling that something was terribly wrong with the world that we live in, but you couldn't figure out just what it was. Then you've come to the right place. Secret societies, mystery religions, and the Illuminati have been controlling our reality since the beginning of time. But not anymore, because there is an awakening happening, and you are about to become a part of it. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. So the question boils down to this. What did happen to the millions, yes, millions of Israelites, who were driven out of Palestine 700 years before Christ? And where were they, if they existed at all, at the time Paul uttered his statement of confidence in God keeping his promises to Israel. Can we find out what happened to them so that their descendants can be identified in the world today? For a visual answer to that question, we are going to call on E. Raymond Camp, a Bible student and biblical archaeologist from California. Mr. Camp has traveled and studied extensively in Europe and the Mideast, he lectures on the Dead Sea Scrolls, on the pyramids of Egypt, and on other archaeological subjects. Mr. Cap is the author of books on the Great Pyramid, on astronomy and the Bible, on Stonehenge of England and Druidism, on Solomon's Temple, on ancient Israel, and he has written an excellent Bible study on the Abrahamic Covenants. Now to Mr. Cap with our question. This interesting little marble head was found in the vicinity of Ephesus in Turkey. Is that an identifiable historical figure? Well, at the present time, we have not identified him, but we hope to do so. I would suggest he's of the Byzantine period, about the 4th or 5th century A.D. Ray, I have read several of your books, and I've had the pleasure of sitting in on some of your lectures. As a minister, I know there is an abundance of prophecy concerning the destiny of Israel. But there is no Bible history of this portion of Israel referred to in 2 Kings 17.6. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hela and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the city of the Medes. The Bible history of this major part of Israel ends here. And yet the prophets and the New Testament promise an increase in numbers, great blessings, and an eventual restoration. With the passing of 2,500 years since this Assyrian captivity, one might think that all hope of tracing these Israelites is lost. Ray, can archaeology answer this question? Yes, Pastor Emery, it has. During the last hundred years, a number of archaeological teams have been working in the Middle East. They have unearthed and published the original contemporary accounts of the Syrians who took the Israelites captive. It is from these records that vital clues have come to light. In fact, these records are found in the form of cuneiform tablets, such as I show you here. These were found at Nineveh in 1900 and published in 1930. However, their relevance to Israel was overlooked then because they were found in complete disorder and amongst about 1,400 other texts. The tablets were Assyrian frontier post reports dated about 707 B.C. They described the activities of a people called Gomera, who lived in the land of Gomera. The descriptions of Gomera described the area the Israelites had been placed just a few years earlier. One tablet stated that when the king of Uratu came into the land of Gomera, his army was routed as the Gomera counterattacked, entered the land of Uratu and killed their commanders. Well, historians are now aware of the fact that the Gomera were the same people who, about 30 years later, uh, during the reign of Ursa Hayden, king of Assyria, were again called Gomera. We find in another and later Assyrian tablet that in the second year of the reign of this same king, which would be about 679 B.C., the Gomera, under a leader named Tuespa, sought freedom by moving north. But the Assyrian army pursued and defeated them in the upper Euphrates district. Nevertheless, they reported a large number of the Israelites escaped to the shores of the Black Sea. The Greeks also recorded the same activity, including an invasion of Sardis, the capital of Lydia, in 645 B.C. In their records, they referred to the Gomera as Kimeroi, which we translate into English as Sumerian. 
about 600 BC, the Lydians drove the Gamera, or Sumerians, out of Asia Minor, where they settled in the Carpathian regions west of the Black Sea. We find them called in the second book of Ezra, the people of Arsereth. We now also know what happened to the larger body of Gamera, or Israelite, that did not escape the Assyrians. They formed an alliance with Ursa Hayden the king when he came under attack of the Medes and the Persians. This treaty allowed the Israelites to establish colonies in Cyprocene in the north and Bactria in the east. With absolutely no help from the Israelites, Assyria fell in 612 BC. Soon the Israelites themselves came under attack by the Medes. Now those that had settled in Cyprocene, they moved north through the Darial Pass into the steppe regions of South Russia. There they became known by the Greek name Scythians. The Israelites that had settled in Bactria were forced north and east. And in the records of the Persians, they were called Masagedi and Saka. Archaeology has solved two of the greatest archaeological problems. First, what happened to the hundreds of thousands of Israelites who disappeared south of the Caucasus? And second, the origin of the Sumerians and the mysterious nomadic tribes known as Scythians who suddenly appeared north of the Caucasus both the same time in history. They were one and the same people. They were Israelites. Now may I point out what the Bible has to say concerning these same people. I'm reading now from Amos 9, uh, verse 9. For lo, I will command and will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in the seas. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Our history books pick up the story at this point, recording the westward migrations of the Scythians as they came into collision with the Sumerians, who had earlier settled west of the Black Sea. Their kinship lost over the centuries. The ensuing battles forced the Sumerians west and north to become the Celts, Gauls, and Cimbri. By the end of the fourth century BC, the Scythians had established themselves as the great and prosperous kingdom of Scythia. Later, the, the Sarmatians, these were a mixed uh, non-Israelite people of Iranian origin, they in turn drove the Scythians northwest to the shores of the Baltic Sea. At this time in history, we find the Romans introduced the name German in place of the name Scythian in order not to confuse the Scythians with the Sarmatians now who occupied Scythia. Germanus uh, being the Latin name for genuine, indicates the Germans were the genuine Scythians. During this time, the Celts were expanding in all directions from Central Europe. Some of the Celts moved into Spain and became known as Ibrius, the Gaelic name for Hebrews. Others poured into Britain to form the bedrock of the British race. Later, the Ibrius moved into Ireland as Scot, and later into Northern Britain to establish the nation of Scotland. Your history books also record the Germanic tribes breaking up into many divisions, the Angles, Saxons, Jutes, Danes, and Vikings, to name just a few. Other Germanic tribes later poured into the lands vacated by the Celts and established the Gothic nations for the Vandals, Lombards, Franks, Burgundians, and others. The so-called lost tribes of Israel were really never lost. They only lost their identity as they migrated westward over the centuries from the land of their captivity. And there you have it, my friends. Mr. Cap has given us a visual answer to our question, what happened to the millions of Israelites who were dispersed out of old Canaan land seven centuries before Christ and who never returned? They migrated onto the continent of Europe and were the ancestors of the white European race. And in answering our question about Israel's disappearance, Mr. Cap has given us the key to several other mysteries of world history. Mr. Cap has revealed to us why it was these European people who became the great nation and who were blessed by God above all other nations, not only with fertile land and abundance from the seas, but with art, science, literature, inventions, and discovery. God bestowed upon that one race almost every invention and discovery that has improved man's condition and lot upon the earth. Certainly God made these offspring of Abraham 
a blessing to all the families of the earth.